Hi everybody, I'm Jeff Morgenthaler. Welcome to another great webinar in our series of how to print on different things. I'm here with Roy Huseman. Hey Roy. How you doing? <laughs> great to have you here again. All right. Um, today we're gonna be talking about printing on shoes and this is a hot topic. I get asked about this a lot, um, which is interesting because it seems like a lot of people are interested in it, but not a lot of people do that. Is that right? No. No, not at all. <laughs> or they might buy the platen and haven't used it yet. It's still sitting in the corner. So. Yeah. So if you are interested in doing this or you think you have a market for it, it might be uh, time to take that leap of faith and go for it because I don't think there are a lot of people out there actually printing on shoes. But uh, it's a really cool product and it can sell for a lot of money with a high profit value, right? Yep, definitely. So. Uh, Today, we're gonna to talk about these, uh, these shoes. I wanna just point out something because a question I get asked a lot, Roy, is um, can I only print on the high tops? And, and what do you have to say about that? Uh, well, you can print on like slip-on style, but you would only be able to print on you know, this, a certain area, like right on the side of the shoe, a design. You can't do an all over like you would on the high top. Or maybe along the front, the top, yeah, you could slip it on like front. that. Yeah, okay. exactly. Well, for today's purposes, we're printing on these high tops. Okay. Um, and also, I just wanna mention, uh, we've got, we've got uh, Jay Bastel. He's very famous. A lot of you have seen him in other webinars. <laughs> He's working in the background. He's making sure everything's working right. He just uh, showed us a note that this is an advanced session. So we're not gonna be talking a lot about um, the, the, the beginner parts of printing. We're gonna be talking about how to prepare and print on shoes. So uh -huh. you should already have a working knowledge of yeah. how to use your printer, right, Roy? Exactly, exactly. Okay. Yeah, if you're just starting out, this might be a little bit uh, more. Uh, than you can handle, but again, it's nice to learn something new and have that ready for when you are ready to transition, you know what you need to do to get there. Plus, this video will be posted after we're done with it and it will be on our site. So. Yeah, we'll be recording this and you'll be able to watch that later. We get asked that in almost every webinar. So we have a section on our website of recorded webinars. If you have questions, put those into our Q&A section. Uh, we will be monitoring that and the chat. Jay and I will be in the background. And I'm going to go ahead and turn the time over to Roy, who will get into the meat of this. And then I'll come, come back on at the end, and we'll, we'll have a little bit more to talk about. Roy, take right. it away. You got it. Thank you so much, Jeff. Appreciate it. Thank you, everyone, for attending today. So I kind of want to go through the tools you're going to need, which I have on a table right here. I know you can't see it from the camera, but no, I'll be lifting everything up so you can see what we're doing. So uh, first thing you're gonna need uh, with our platen that you can purchase on our website, okay? Uh, you're gonna need a uh, two-sided si rug and carpet tape. Two inch is really good to use. And there is a lot of glare. So if I turn this sideways, you could see, I don't have it going right down the middle but it kind of comes over a little bit more on this side here than not. Let me uh, see if I can get some of this glare off. Okay, so you can see here how the tape is on the uh, platen. Okay, so there's, I have a little arrow here. This is the side that faces the front. I also have a tick mark there in the center point. So I can measure from that center point to where my shoe end is going to be when I'm mounting my shoe. That would be the back end of the shoe, okay? So I wanna keep that consistent. When I'm creating my artwork, the consistent uh, item is gonna be the bottom, we're next to the sole, okay, down here, and then the back end. So you have this back corner right here that is always gonna be consistently on this back edge, okay? So keep that in mind as you're creating your artwork. The other thing to keep in mind is how far that shoe is gonna stick off. So here on this one, um, I am using, or it is a, um, what do you call it? Uh, eight, size eight shoe versus this shoe being a size 10. So when you're dealing with two different size shoes, 
Obviously the platen can't be too big, otherwise I'm not gonna be able to print on your standard sizes. So the platen is rigged to print, uh, you know, uh, obviously more on some of the adult sizes, but it does have a cutout here in the back, which allows you to move some of the smaller sizes and get them on there, okay? But uh, when it comes to an eight, which fits perfect, or the midsize shoes on the platen versus a 10, you're going to need some other items, okay? So th that would include some hard foam uh, and maybe some uh, wooden dowel that are cut up in different lengths that you can use to prop up some of the fabric to kind of even it out as you're putting it on. So once we get to that point where we're loading the shoes, I will go ahead and tape the whole thing and allow you to watch that. Go ahead. Yeah, quick question for you, Roy. Sorry to interrupt. A um, couple people have asked, what brand of shoe are you using and where do you buy them? Okay, well, these specific shoes, I believe, came from Amazon or eBay. Uh, they're like 15 bucks a pair. Uh, but you basically want a con Converse knockoff that's 100% cotton. This particular shoe, if I were to uh, get them, I obviously want to check and see, maybe buy one or two to check them out. But this shoe, although they look the same, completely different. This one, the structure is much better. Uh, it's a better made shoe, better sole um, on it as well. So you might want to ask to see some pictures before you purchase if they don't have enough online. Uh, but basically at the end of the day, all these shoes come from China, most of them. So you can go on Alibaba if you're prepared to, you know, maybe buy a couple samples through there and get shoes down in a range of anywhere between three and six dollars a pair. So, you know, that gives you the ability to make a hell of a lot more money because if you look at any of the sites that really focus on selling shoes, the biggest site that I've seen out there other than going to maybe a Vans or one of the main shoe suppliers now, but um, um, I had it and then I lost it. But uh, I watched there on Christmas time and, um, they're selling, uh, it's Zazzle, so check that out. They sell shoes around the holidays and they're sold out by the time beginning of October rolls around. And uh, they're selling shoes between 85 and 120, $130 a pair. So there is a lot of time invested in these shoes. So I definitely don't wanna skimp and spend $3 on a pair that's a little cheaper. You know, if I can get a really nice pair for five or $6, and I can sell them for 80, 90 bucks, it's worth my time to spend on this. Because if you get 10 pairs of shoes out a day, uh, you're making about $800 or close to that uh, in profits, okay? So getting back to, the first thing that you're gonna need to do to prep your shoes is going to be pre-treat. So you're gonna need a, uh, a light mixture of pre-treat, you know, that works with uh, a light setting. And then you're gonna go ahead and just make sure you're saturating the fabric really well. And I have a video that we went through and did a manual pre-treat. It's not a very long video, but you're gonna saturate it pretty good, okay? And again, like I said, you're gonna do this ahead of time. Uh, I can dry this with a heat gun, okay? Or I can just set them up so I'm gonna do a few pairs. I can set them up on the uh, heat press right here and the ambient heat will start drying them off or I can manually uh, go ahead and start the drying process, okay? Rather than spending a lot of time on that, um, I do have some that I've already um, pre-treated yesterday that are completely dry, okay? And I've already taped them. So I'm gonna go through the taping process with you on this other pair, okay? So basically you're gonna need a couple different types of tape. Again, two-sided rug and carpet tape for the platen. Uh, it does last quite a while if you get a good tape. Um, then you're gonna need some type of thick uh, duct tape. This one happens to be black. And then some painter's tape or 
masking tape, whichever you feel more comfortable with, and then two sizes, obviously. So basically, the first thing you're going to do is tape the side of the shoe that you're going to start with, and looking at it, you're going to go through and just line it up to the edge of the rubber. As you start working your way, you can just do a couple different pieces. So, you know, you're not going to get it all in one shot because it's curved. So just keep that in mind and just do some smaller strips. Okay. Again, I'm just going to line that up with the edge of the rubber and run that down. Okay, this is the, ti the time consuming part of the process here. So. So now basically run it up the front right there. And then I'm gonna cover, I could always use the thicker tape, but I'm gonna cover whatever residual that we have down at the bottom of the rubber right where the sole is. I'm missing a little spot there. So I'm gonna cover that up as well. Yeah, Go question ahead. for you yeah. um, real quick here, Roy. You're taping that off because the ink is not going to come off the rubber, right? That's the whole point of this. Well, the thing is, is yeah, the ink is water-based. If I have a wet rag handy, I can wipe it off. But the thing is, if my print's right up on the edge of that rubber, Am I going to start getting into that print? Am I going to introduce water into it as I'm scrubbing? It's just a lot easier to put tape to mask it off because you are going to have overspray, okay? Uh, that's because of the size of the image we're trying to put on here and to be able to make sure I have enough to kind of overlap the areas. I'm also going to be using uh, some piece scraps of t-shirt to cover certain areas so I make sure that I don't have any overspray on the part of the shoe that I need. Obviously, you can reuse this as well. So we'll get to that part in a moment. So basically, once I get the one side done, uh, the next thing would be, obviously, this is a thicker piece, so I could cut it in half. Um, but basically, I would just go ahead and pull a piece of this off. Now, the reason why you need this thicker duct tape is because of the fabric. The uh, painter's tape is not gonna stick to the fabric uh, like the duct tape will. And we need to protect our back rib on the uh, shoe from getting overspray when we print on either side. So the back uh, spine is not going to be printed on, okay? FYI, because of that overspray issue. Plus it gives it some a little bit of stability when you do that. So if I cut it, I'm going to check the one side that I'm going to print on right now. And I'm going to start at the top, make sure I have enough to hang over. Okay, line it up with that edge. So I'm going to fold that over the top. And then I'm going to grab that and kind of line it up and then just push the tape right up on there. And again, that gives it a little bit of st stability on that edge right there, and it's this tape is not gonna come off the uh, canvas, okay, until you're ready to take it off. So um, as far as the rubber goes, this other tape works fine. Then we got our front that we're gonna have an issue with. So I need to take my tongue and just roll it, roll it up in there, okay, and shove it up underneath the rubber, okay. And then I'll go ahead and take my bigger tape I'm basically gonna go across the front of the rubber there. Okay, go underneath. And then I'm gonna get another two short pieces. And go across the edge here from inside the shoe. Okay, so basically that covers the front of the shoe, um, the side of the shoe that I'm going to be printing on, and that's basically what I've done on these ones here. 
that have already been pre-treated to print on the one side, okay? <coughs> so when you are dealing with the, this, if you look at this shoe on how loose it is right here, this fabric's pretty thin, uh, but it does have a nice smooth surface on it to print on. So, you know, I'll give it that. Compared to this one here is a little bit uh, more coarse of a weave. But again, it printed beautifully and the shoe is definitely made a lot better. So um, keep that in mind. But on this one, since it's so flexible, uh, when I am pre-treating it and wetting it, if I want to try to get this, I can kind of work it while it's wet. And then when it dries, it's going to hold in its position. So typically you could do something like this where you could use your shoelace to kind of go through your shoe as it's going through the drying process and just get this set up to where it's going to dry more flat than flip floppy on the opening, okay? So keep that in mind as well. So we've gone through the tape. And again, as I mentioned, some foam, uh, heavy, heavy foam that's not going to smash easily uh, that I cut up. Uh, you can buy them in blocks from some outlets where you put them in computer bags and what have you because they have like little um, cuts in them to where you can pull pieces out. So anyway, and then again, a wooden dowel. I think these things run about a dollar or something at the Home Depot and then just cut them in different lengths depending on the shoe. Okay, so I'll get to mounting this shoe in a second here. Um, let me bring this camera over. All right. Get this back. Okay. Yeah, you can do questions. Okay, here's a, a question. You were pre-treating that um, right there in front of the, the heat press and pretty close to the... Um, the printer, somebody asked if that was a no-no to pre-treat so close to the printer. Uh, well, basically, I wouldn't do that normally. I'm doing that for the sake of the video. Uh, basically, the way I would do it is set out a piece of paper or fabric to set the shoe on top of, to spray down at the shoe. Um, I'm just trying to hold it up to the camera so you guys can see what's going on. So okay. whatever okay. your normal procedures are, for pre-treating, that's what I would go with. Typically, when I pre-treat, uh, if you do have our, our famous speed treater here, uh, this isn't an infomercial, but uh, you can go ahead and either throw a towel down, or what I do is typically just open the drawer and I will set shoes down on the speed treater and just spray them as Perfect. they're sitting there like this. So if there is any overspray, it'll fall down into the tray then I can wipe it out just like I normally do with the shirts. Perfect. Thank you, Roy. Somebody asked about a template in Garment Creator. I assume you're going to cover that in a minute. Yes. Okay. I'm going to go through start to finish here on everything. So you guys will see the whole entire process. Okay. And this is going to be uh, how you would typically handle it. So being that we got this, this shoe is going to go on this side here, okay? Uh, this one here will go on this side. So the first thing I want to do is, since this is a more flimsy uh, shoe, is I want to deal with this part of it right here and make sure that I can get that pushed out. That's where this block of foam is going to come into play, okay? So I'm going to get that foam. I want to make sure that I know that my platen as I go in, it's gonna go in between that area right there, but at least it's going to allow some pressure to push up on that area right there. So as I get this in there, I'm gonna be pushing this shoe. The thing I wanna do is make sure it's aligned flush with this edge right here, because this is my square corner right here that I'm gonna be working with. The other thing is down along this edge needs to be lined up along the edge of the material right here as well. So again, I push that foam out of the way as I bring it up on there, lining it up. 
And again, making sure that my hard edge is running a, along that shoe right there and pulling this thing forward. Okay. And then I'm just pushing, working it down on that rug and carpet tape right there. Okay, so you can see I'm pretty flat on that. Now I might have a little dip right here. Okay, you don't want to have this lifted up because if this rubber is too high, then my flatten uh, sensor is going to have an issue. So I want to make sure that this is completely pushed down and the shoe should be at a little bit of an angle here on the, uh, the sole should be facing kind of downward. Okay. So I got all that lined up there, and then if I need a little bit of extra, I can shove it up that foam to make this kind of more square at this end. And then the front, if it's hanging down a little bit, this is where I can take another piece of foam and shove it down on the one side and use my dowel to kind of Push it up. So again, this is a little cumbersome, but at the end of the day, you can make a, a lot of money on the shoes. Yeah, while you're doing that, Roy, that reminds me of uh, somebody I met at a trade show in California who's doing these custom shoes and selling them between um, 180 to about $250 for mm -hmm. custom printed shoes so there's some money to be made here oh there definitely is and the better you are at it the more money you're going to be able to get and a lot of that has there's more to it too there's your marketing and your design concept um there's your market you know so a lot of things to keep in mind Again, this other block. Okay, so now I'm just checking to make sure that the hard edge of the platens right up with the fabric right there. Everything's laying down really good onto the tape okay and then i got as much pushed up back here in the back section as possible okay so the next thing i'm going to be doing now that the machine has gone to sleep on me is i'm going to set my platen height now you're going to have overspray okay so what you want to do at this point is basically take some scrap pieces and kind of just go over this platen area. And if you need to cut something down, you can, not a big deal. Well, that's gonna give me an error. Okay, that one's too big. So basically, we just mainly uh, the platen itself, we can always wash the ink off, so I'm not really worried about it. I'm worried about if anything oversprays into the machine itself. I'm kind of making sure I kind of protect everything back here. Uh, the other thing is if you do have an issue where your shoes are real uh, stiff and they want to bring the sole up, you can always uh, use bungee cords and just go underneath to grab the, uh, the uh, back side of the sole 
to pull it down, okay? So keep that in mind. This, these ones are actually laying down pretty good, so I don't need to do that on this pair. So again, wanna go ahead and just cover the back of my plat in there. And then uh, the next thing again, is let's go back one step here and making sure this is all lower than my shoe and get a platen height check. Let's see where we're at. So I am right now at platen height five. And I will go ahead and go to five and a half. Okay, five and a half it is. Okay, so the next thing, you wanna have some scrap white shirts as you are learning. So you don't have to ruin a pair, okay? So basically, I'm going to take and thread a white shirt over my shoes, okay? Then I'm going to lay that as flat as can be. Make sure my platen is going to be okay with that. If not, I'll go to six, and then when I'm ready to print, I'll go back to five and a half. Okay, so we're good to go at six with the t-shirt. Okay. So at this point, I will be going to uh, my computer and getting on Garment Creator and showing that part of it. If uh, Jay lets me share my screen here. Okay, so basically we provide you with the template for the garment creator to align your shoes. And we also provide you with the template to figure out your artwork size. Keep in mind that you'll need to do measuring uh, length of the shoe. Uh, and you may need to manipulate how far up the high top you're gonna go with your designs and set those up. So if you go to a much larger shoe, I might need to stretch this out a little bit and be a little bit lower on the high top aspect. Uh, as far as one aspect of Garment Creator, which is great to use, is you're gonna create both uh, templates individually as you see on the screen here. That gives you the ability to move each one separately because depending on the size of the shoe, uh, we give you the template with both sides, but when you actually save them, save them individually and, and crop the uh, size of the image all the way down so you can actually move one image independently because the, as the size change, the position change. Obviously this corner, as I said, stays stable on the actual uh, platen, but the height position and the, the length obviously is gonna change depending on the size of the shoe, okay? So once I get that positioned, then I can go here in Garment Creator. On this shoe, it's being a light shoe. I can set up my settings. On this one, I just went ahead and did a level three to get a little finer resolution versus the level two. Uh, adding about 25% to my color and add a little bit more on uh, brightness and contrast, okay? Which uh, t on this one, I could probably cut that back to five uh, and not make it quite so dark. Um, but basically that's it as far as settings. Now, 
I can go ahead and okay, those are still set right. All right, so I can just go ahead and print that, and then I'm going to print it on the T-shirt first. Once I print it on the T-shirt, I can verify where everything's at, and then go ahead and take the shirt off and print on the shoe itself. Okay. Is there any questions while we're waiting for that? The other thing I want you to keep in mind is this rug and carpet tape. Uh, the shoe, depending on everything involved, could lift up a little bit as it sits for a period of time. So you just want to go back and make sure that you're um, everything's laying down perfect. Somebody asked, Roy, uh, how many shoes can you print before you have to change that tape out? Have you ever um, really checked that out? Yeah, I would say probably 15, 20 or something. Okay. We've had the platen that we've used multiple times and we still have the original tape on it. It's the, the tape's pretty sticky. Um, so anyway, got ready to print here. So I'm making sure it's completely flat again. Go ahead and print. So this is the process, by the way. When I go back and uh, you want, probably want to remind yourself at the beginning, pull the shirt off, I need to make sure I raise my platen back up or that's going to be an issue. Oh, the other thing I didn't mention on Garment Creator, you want to make sure you're printing in unidirectional mode. If you're not, that's going to be an issue. It's going to look like someone took a spray can and graffitied on the shirt. I mean, on the shoe. Sorry about that. Got shirt on the mind. Uh, prints fell fairly flat, fast with all that work that we did. Um, the shoes uh, going to come out here in a second. Here, if you're doing a dark shoe, uh, keep in mind that uh, obviously. You know, it's going to be a lot harder to line all that up. Uh, so, you know, lighter shoes are better to add more color to and make it look like you've just flooded it with ink versus printing on a dark shoe with a white base. That would be more for uh, if you just want to do a smaller image on the shoe itself, kind of like the, the slip-ons we were talking about. Somebody asked, Roy, when printing on shoes, um do you do anything to protect the inside from the overspray? That was when you were putting down the scrap pieces of shirt. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. you kind of covered that. So I put a scrap piece in the front where the front sole and the tongue is that hangs off the back end. There isn't going to be anything getting in there at all because the whole high top rear of the shoe goes all the way up to there. So it's going to cover that portion. Yeah, and somebody asked, uh, you can print on anything cotton fabric for your test print. It doesn't have to be a, oh, yeah. a goof tee. That's just yeah. typically people have I those laying around. I could have cut this shirt into pieces and flipped, flipped it around and what have you. You can see I'm getting overspray right now in the front, but that's not a part of the shoe I'm not even going to print on. And this helps you figure out where the position of your artwork is going to be as well. And somebody asked about, again, about printing on low top sneakers. We covered that already at the beginning, but for some of you who um, came in a little bit late, we Yeah, have, I can go through yeah. that real quick afterwards and kind of show you uh, placement and how you would put the shoe on. So you could see the image on here. I know where my sole is. I'm looking at along the edge here, and I know where my high top is if I'm cutting something off. Uh, I can kind of move my artwork one way or the other. Yeah. Okay. All looks good. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this shirt off. Set it to the side. Make sure my canvas is flat. Again, reminder to yourself. You might have to put a piece of tape on your finger to raise my platen back up, okay, and get ready for the other print. 
So I'm going to go back to Garment Creator real quick if I can. Got that. And again, I just want to show you here under print direction uh, that it is set for unidirectional. Again, don't forget to do that part. And this video will be on uh, YouTube as well. And I know we didn't mention, but go to Equipment Zone on YouTube and subscribe and uh, hit notifications button and you'll get a, uh, um, a, I guess a link or whatever when we upload a video every time. So something to keep in mind as well, because we're always coming out with uh, new videos. Oh, can you unshare that? I'm sorry. There you go. Yeah, and that note about subscribing to YouTube, Roy, I know Jay does a great job with our social media. We have a couple of um, pages on Facebook that are very active. People ask a lot of questions. We have the um, our own Equipment Zone Facebook page, mm -hmm. but we're very active. You are personally yeah. um, responding to a lot of people on the F2100 when page yeah. when you have time. Yeah. So that's another great one to subscribe to. All right. So one thing to keep in mind when you're creating your designs too, it's always nice to keep in mind on this back curve here or even down here towards the front. When you create your designs, have some type of blend that kind of feathers off would be something that I would keep in mind uh, when you're creating your designs. Because when you get uh, these curves right here, you might end up losing a little bit. So uh, it's a way to kind of get the color there, but you're not. Where are we at here with the print? Did it go through? Oh, there it goes. So again, if you have any other questions, feel free to ask. While we're waiting for this to print. Again, uh, you can go to our um, website while we're waiting on this uh, to purchase the uh, shoe platen. Uh, this particular one's exclusive with uh, Equipment Zone. Uh, Do you know how much the platen? Gene is? asked if we would come to Western Oklahoma and train us. Actually, um, we are now traveling anywhere but Western Oklahoma. Is that correct? Well, yeah, the COVID's pretty uh, strict over there. Yeah, Western Oklahoma. Yeah, quarantine and all In that stuff. In the Panhandle stuff, area. So I don't gotcha. want to fly somewhere where I got to stay for 15 days. To and then ride a, ride a horse to get yeah. to the client. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. <laughs> I'm just playing. All right. <laughs> hey, the horses are ready, she says. All there right. you go. Love to go. Love well, to Gene, go. let me tell you, I'm, uh, I'm not real fond of horses right now, so. <laughs> It's a story for another time. <laughs> a little COVID accident with the horse. That's, that's right. Uh, he thought he was young again. That's right. Yeah. Um, do you have the software for Garment Creator? Um, not clear what you mean. Like, do we have the Garment Creator software that yeah. you can find on the um, F2100 page at Epson.com? Mm -hmm. um, or are you asking if we have the template? Yes, we have yeah. the template. We provide the template that goes within Garment Creator for positioning of the artwork. We have a template to bring into Photoshop, Illustrator, Corel Draw, uh, whatever program you're using to create the images uh, and kind of for the high tops. Uh, you can, after you look at them, you could create your own within uh, those programs. But Getting back to, I think we might have mentioned at the beginning, I hope we did, this is more of an advanced uh, type of thing that you would be doing with the DTG, uh, as well as someone that has the capability of creating their own designs. Because if you don't, and you're relying on an outside source, then you want to make sure that outside source is going to be able to provide that for you. So basically at this point, you could see I got a little bit of overspray. Here, I'll bring this camera in a little closer so you can see that. So I'm going to go ahead and start the cure on this using a heat gun, and then uh, 
go ahead and uh, unravel one of the tape and you'll be able to see the success of this image. So you're looking about, you don't wanna put the heat gun too close because it will burn. Uh, you want it just at a good distance. It's blowing a lot of heat on there. I mean, I can't even keep my hand underneath it from even at that distance. You want to give about a good 60 seconds to it. And then once I do that, I can remove it, take the tape off, and I'll go ahead and show you the end result. All right, so pulling it off the tape. Keep an eye on those little eyelet oh, loops there. They're freaking hot. So basically, you could see my foam came out with the dowel. I can pull this back piece off and unreveal the end result here. Hey, while you're pulling that tape off, Roy, we got a, an interesting question from... Uh from a plant, an insider, Amy, asked if, uh, what is the temperature of the, the heat gun? Oh, this uh, heat gun's running way over 300 degrees. Okay. This would be an industrial size heat gun. So something that you'd use for shrink wrapping or something of that nature. When you're working on graphics wrap. for cars, stuff like that. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you're worried about the cost of them, I know Harbor Freight sells them for like about 28, 30 bucks. <clears throat> so they're not that expensive. Are you sure you were tested for coronavirus, Roy? I'm yes. Not, okay, just making sure. All right, so success. So basically you could see how this one little area right here is a little on the light side. And that's why I said when you do designs, if you kind of feather them off towards that edge, that would be good. Over here, it actually did a fairly good job of covering all the way up the front of the shoe. You can see the focus detail looks really good on that shirt, I mean shoe. So if you are a Marvels fan, this would be uh, definitely a good product for or design for you to do, okay? Uh, question for you, Roy, and this came from um, the person sitting next to me. Uh, Jay was asking about the ink on the eyelids. So yes. does that wipe right off or does uh, that stay No, actually put? it may wear off over time, but uh, it doesn't wipe right off, no. I mean, some of it does, actually. Take that back, it does, some of it. It depends, some of it may stay, some of it may come off, but it's not gonna hurt anything. Okay. So you could see a little bit on my finger there. So you can kind of clean that off. And somebody said that's DC, not Marvel, just to be oh, clear. Oh, well, I'm sorry. I'm an old guy. <laughs> I'm not really into comics. But you can see, I mean, versatility. If you want to do just one big image or do multiple images, you have that capability. Uh, shout out to someone at my office creating this artwork. Yeah, um, and, and Tani, the, um, the copyright infringement issue it's funny that you bring that up. I was just joking with Jay about that on, on the side here. Um, that's a whole nother webinar that we can get into, right, Jay? No. No, he says. <laughs> well, actually, I can talk a little bit about that. I've done a lot of uh, listening to the laws on uh, copyright. Uh, we're not talking copyright when we're talking uh, this type of product. This is more of a trademark issue. There's no way around trademarks unless you license to work with that company, you need to do that, okay? Um, a lot of people, even I've done training at customers that are small, they've done Etsy accounts, what have you, and they're doing Disney stuff, and I'm like, well, now you're gonna go big time, and they're, well, no one's ever bothered me before, 
Well, I'm like, as soon as you start making 20, 30 grand a month, there's going to be a knock on the door and they're going to put you out of business. Especially Disney it. will come after you. Yeah. Um, I would be really careful with Disney stuff. I did talk to somebody at a trade show who was from the Department of Homeland, Homeland Security who monitors trademark infringement. And he said to me, as long as you are not selling it, you, yeah. you're just using it. For like this right here is legal for what I just did. We are not selling these shoes. This is for demonstration purposes only. If anything, it's an advertising for them. Yeah, you're welcome, yeah. DC. Yeah, exactly. The other thing, getting back and covering on the, the copyright issue, uh, keeping in mind with today's technology, even your designs, as soon as you post them on Etsy, they are essentially copyright in, a, in an aspect. You can go after somebody, but a way around copyrights Let's say I have a kitten with some words on it. All I have to do is change the type of kitten, position of the kitten, and change the verbiage around a little bit. And I've just now came up with a design similar to yours, and uh, there's no issue. So, yeah, and you know, Roy, I think for, for people, the power is not to go purchase or, or to print stuff like this, because you can go to stores and find DC or Marvel mm -hmm. shoes printed. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The power of this is to do custom shoes for your clients, to do mm -hmm. their artwork, to do their school logos, to do that kind of stuff on these Or shoes. their family reunion. Yeah. If they all want to wear the same shoes because they're sick of wearing the same pink <laughs> shirts with green printing on yeah. it. If you're and into that, I pictures apologize. all over the shoe instead of the Marvel comic. That might be cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, let's take another close up here so everybody can see that. See, that looks really cool. It's worth the time, definitely. So you can see if I'm doing it all the time, it's, uh, I would say it probably take maybe 15 to 20 minutes to print both sides of a shoe. Uh, and if you're making 80, 90 bucks profit per pair, it's well worth it. Absolutely. Um, we had mentioned during the webinar that we would talk again real quick. We mentioned this at the beginning. We'll mention it again on the low tops. You can still print low tops. You're just going to be limited to a smaller print area. But if they're the slip-on kind, then it's fairly easy to just yeah, slip so that on the. I could take this shoe and imagine if this was the slip-on. I don't have any with me. The front of the shoe, I would just put it up over. Okay, got all this stuff on here. Up over the the front here making sure the back end hangs down because it's not going to be a high top so there won't be a problem and i get my front end down so i might need to get some kind of bungee cord to do that but i could print a design up the front again it would be more like a t-shirt style design like an image rather than trying to do a full coverage like that okay uh yeah another piece of free uh, marketing um, my friend just turned 50. If we were all wearing shoes with his picture on it at his birthday party, that would have been awesome. Yeah. Uh, Jay is raising his hand back here. Jay yeah, has a ahead, question. Jay. How many pair could we well, do in an hour? Well, it depends. If you want to get another platen and mount shoes prior to printing, and once you got the feel of how your artwork is and you get better at placement, I did this as a secondary item, but once you know what you're doing on placement, you won't need to do this, okay? This is when you set up for the day, maybe the first pair of shoes that you start to print, you're gonna go through this process. But once you do, uh, the grid pattern on your platen allows you to go ahead and measure the distance here from the lip front lip of the high top to the back edge and how far do I need to go up on my platen with my design? How far am I going to hang over on the actual shoe? Go All ahead. right, we got another question from the peanut gallery. Jay? Okay, Jay. Can we print on yes. black shoes? I did mention that as well. When you're doing a full print, you're covering everything with the white shoe, okay, as you can see here. Uh, so if you're asking if I can do a black shoe, yes, but Typically, 
with the white going down, you may have more of an issue with this standing out more on the front and the back edge. So I would say just printing designs on here, like uh, not something as a full coverage. Like I a school consider. logo maybe yeah, on the exactly, ankle. exactly. Okay. Great. Something like that, definitely. You could print on any color shoe at that point. Or some sweet flames down yeah, the side. Exactly. Yeah, flames are in. Yeah. Ultimately, if you're doing just a smaller design, you could print on any color uh, shoe just like you can with shirts. Okay. Well, thank you, everybody. I think yep. we've covered everybody's questions, and we really appreciate you attending today. Um, on the screen, you will see the ultimate shoe platen for 349. That works both on the F2000 and the F2100. Uh -huh. And uh, so you can go to the cart or you can call your favorite sales guy, Jeff, and yeah. order that. Yeah. Um, also on our website, you can see uh, where we have previous webinars or what's coming up uh, in future webinars. On yeah. September 15, this is gonna be you again, right, Roy? Yeah, me, me and you. Right? Oh, I'm involved in Tech Talk? I believe well, so. Well, that's scary. That's right. <laughs> Should be a lot of fun. Yeah. All right. Well, I look kind forward a, to it. A banter back and forth. So if there's anything you need to know and haven't had an opportunity to really ask, it's going to be kind of an open conversation covering various issues. That anything they want to ask. Nothing's yeah. off the table. That's right. Oh, anything. my goodness. It's going to get crazy. All right. You got it. All right. And there's our contact information. Feel free to give me a call or shoot me an email. You can also reach Roy through support yep. at equipmentzone.com. That's it for now. I'm Jeff Morgenthaler. Roy Huseman. Have a great day. Thanks, everybody. All right. Thank you so much. You have a great one.